Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> Hope you guys are having a great one. I'm excited about today's topic. I'm Carrie. This is my sister, Julie, and we are the founders of A Natural Shift. And our mission every single time we come on is to give you simple, easy things you can incorporate to kind of take you where you are to where you want to go, give you sort of a roadmap, if you will, of healthy living. And so today, really the whole month, we're just talking about how to detoxify. And, you know, we know that um, everybody is kind of still probably maybe recovering from the holidays, even though it seems like that was a long time ago. It still takes your body a good amount of time, oftentimes, especially if you kind of, let's just say, let everything go and you just ate whatever you wanted to. It takes a little bit to get that back. So we um, are still kind of on this theme because honestly, we, we try to sort of, you know, what is coming up for us and what are people asking us about? So we want to to speak to what we are currently experiencing. And also we know that that's going to help you because so many of you have um, reached out and said, this is great content. This is what we love. We've, we've been um, wondering about these things. So we're happy that you're loving the, um, <clears throat> the content that we bring every week. So today on the subject of detoxifying, we wanted to talk about self care and self care is something that when I used to hear about it, I would think, I don't have time for self-care. Who has time for all this stuff? <laughs> but what I realized is we make time for whatever is important to us. We can make time to watch a TV show. We can make time to scroll through Facebook for an hour. We can make time for whatever we want to. It just, you know, I just had somebody the other day ask me, how do you do all that you do? And I'm sure that they've asked you that before. I make time for what's important to me. And so I know from, you know, not taking care of myself and then to starting to incorporate some of these things, I can see a huge difference. So now I schedule in self-care. I schedule in, you know, we're going to talk about have, taking a detox bath and then all of these different things that you can do once or twice a week or some every day, but you have to schedule those in and then they become routine after you maybe have your little um, checklist or whatever is good for you, kind of schedule them in your calendar, then they become your new normal. So we wanted to give you a few things that we felt like have really been beneficial to us and just a little bit more information on them. You've probably heard us talk about these before, but wanted to get dive in just a tad bit deeper. So, you know, Julie's going to dive into the first one, but before she does that, just you know, I want you to realize that if you don't do anything for self-care, simply incorporating one of these things um, for even a month, even if you did one a month, to just see what can you connect with the most, what you feel the most results from, what's the easiest thing for you to do would probably be what I would start with first. Because if you make it too overwhelming, more than likely you're probably not going to do it. You're going to think, I can't keep up with this. This is just too much. It's too much of a change. And that's the last thing we want you to do. So we're not saying do all of this at one time. You know, pick one thing, like I said, and, and do it for a week, two weeks, whatever. And if you think that's just not what <clears throat> you're not connecting with it, you're not seeing many results right now, that, that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't work, but might not be for you at this moment. So um, think about that as we go through this and just see what you can maybe incorporate out of some of the things that we discussed. So Julie's going to jump right into talking about um, dry skin brushing. Yes, this is actually one of my favorite things to do now. And when I first heard of this technique, I'm going to explain it to you and tell you what the benefits are. But when I first kind of heard of this technique, I thought, oh, that seems kind of strange. But let's think about this for a minute. We, we brush our hair. We use, some people use those little brushes like the Clarisonic brushes to brush our face, right? And we take really good care of things like you know, the skin on our face and our hair, but have you ever thought about brushing your skin, um, you know, on the rest of your body? The reason that we want to begin to incorporate this is it really helps in multiple areas. The first one is boosting your circulation. And, you know, when you have better circulation, um, it leads to overall improved health. What it does is it encourages the elimination of toxins and waste in our body. So the more that we can get rid of those, of course, the less likely we are to get sick and develop, you know, chronic, not only chronic illnesses, but just things, toxic buildup can be, make you feel or have things like headaches, poor digestion, just feeling sluggish and tired. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I could rid my body of something that was causing me to feel that way, simply by brushing my skin, 
uh, I would do it, right? <laughs> so this is, again, just one of those things that you can consider incorporating. So the way that this works is this is um, the dry skin. This is my dry skin brush. Um, some of them don't have handles on them. Um, so you can get one, you know, that is uh, handheld as well. And you really just take the brush and you just really want to work in a circular motion. You can also kind of work in a um, uh, sort of a, in streaks, so to speak. But the, the biggest thing here is to work towards your heart. OK, and the reason for that is this really helps improve uh, lymphatic drainage. So it really helps to stimulate your lymph nodes and your lymphatic system. Now, the lymphatic system, just kind of, you know, a little bit of information here, it's responsible for collecting, transporting um, the blood and eliminating the waste in our cells or, or that our cells uh, produce. Um, so our lymphatic system can get clogged with toxins and uh, you know, buildup, which causes inflammation and leads to illness. And so that's one of the big benefits to this dry skin brushing is helping to stimulate the circulation and the lymphatic system. Also, think about when you brush, say you use one of those uh, clarisonic brushes like I referred to. Um, when you do that, you're exfoliating your skin, right? So you're helping to unclog pores, getting rid of dead skin cells, and really just making your skin look more vibrant and radiant. And so that's what dry skin brushing does for the rest of your skin. You know, in the winter, I don't know about you guys, but um, I really don't like to put on lotion. I'm just being honest. It's just like <laughs> it's not consuming, and I'm like, want to skip that step although I do it. Um, but if you think about how dry your skin can get during the winter, getting rid of that dead skin cell and kind of that layer um, of dead skin, you really are going to absorb the moisture of um, your lotion and you know what you're putting on. The other, I want to tell you uh, just a couple of other really big benefits to dry skin brushing. One is improved digestion. So when I like when I dry skin brush my abdomen, I like to go in a um, clockwise motion. So I just will kind of, you know, brush all around my abdomen. And that really helps to improve your digestion. It helps with bloating. Um, it helps, you know, if you have things like constipation, it helps with that. And that's one of the biggest ways you eliminate toxins and waste is, of course, you know, through your GI tract. Um, so very important there. And this is a big one that I know uh, most women especially will, will be uh, thankful to hear. And that is that it improves the appearance of cellulite. <laughs> um, so I don't know about you guys, but um, I want improved appearance of cellulite. <laughs> There's, like I want it to go away completely, of course, like probably everybody that has it. But um, that is actually unrealistic. I mean, there is if a product tells you that it is going to completely get rid of your cellulite, then... Mm, better think twice about about buying it because if you if you really look into the the uh, medical cause of it and um, sort of some of the science behind it, it's really impossible to eliminate it altogether. You can reduce the appearance of it though through things like dry skin brushing. Um, so when would be the best time to do this? I like to dry skin brush right before I get into the shower. Um, you know, you're getting rid of the dead skin cells. A, a warm shower or bath will help to open up your pores. And then when you get out, you put your lotion on. Sometimes I'll even just put coconut oil on just for, you know, added moisture there. Um, but that's the best way. And I would encourage you to do this in your shower, because if you think about it, you're getting rid of dead skin cells. I mean, even though they're not really visible, you don't really want them all over like your bathroom floor. So a good time to do it would be Hop in the shower, dry skin brush, only takes a couple of minutes. Remember, always moving towards your heart because that's sort of the way that the lymphatic system works and drains. Um, and then, you know, take your shower and then put on some, some good moisture afterwards. So the morning is a good time, you know, if you shower in the morning, uh, because it really helps um, to stimulate and invigorate you, this dry skin brushing. Now, I will say that I sometimes do dry skin brushing at night and it's not like it keeps you awake. So I did want to just, you know, mention that. And you can also add essential oils to your brush. Um, I like to add DDR prime. That's one It's the cellular uh, complex and it, um, it just really helps keep your cells really clean and healthy. So you could, you know, drop 
a couple of drops, but often I'll keep that in a spray bottle um, just with some water and you can just spray it. You get a more even distribution and then use the dry skin brush that way. But pretty simple, Carrie, I know you like to, to dry skin brush as well, right? I do, but I'll be really honest. This is something that I don't do on a regular basis. Like I have my dry skin brush over there, but I haven't, I guess I haven't gotten in a good routine with it for some reason, like some of these others that we'll talk about. And that's just, I don't know, I mean, if it's just personal kind of your routine. Um, I don't always take a bath at the same time. And so I think that throws me off a little bit, but I do keep it out of the counter. And so that does remind me to do it. I probably do it about once or twice a week or something like that. But um, keep getting in a good routine with these type of things really is key. So, um, you know what, the thing is, even though I don't do it probably as much as I should, I haven't given up. That's what's, you know, really important. Don't, don't give up on some of these things if you don't do it as much as we recommend or that we do. Just try it one time. Try to get in a routine. If it doesn't happen, just don't, don't get rid of it. Don't give up, but, um, keep trying to go back to it until you do. But, um, I, I love the thing that I'm going to talk about next, detox baths. Um, I love taking a bath. I didn't used to love taking a bath for some reason. I think it was because, again, I didn't think I had time for that, right? It takes time to, um, you know, maybe I was wanted to go watch a TV show. That probably was the thing. Normally I do it at night, and that's when, you know, before I would watch a TV show with my husband or by myself or whatnot. But I don't watch much TV now. So I love to take nighttime for more of the self-care rituals. Um, and things and bath is definitely one of those. So I try to take um, a detox bath probably once or twice a week. Definitely I tend to do it more in the uh, winter because obviously I'm cold and, uh, and it you know warms me up and it feels a little bit better I guess in the winter because it is colder outside. But detox baths are awesome for like we're talking about just these are things that you know you might already take a bath that you can kind of up level it and get more detoxifying effects. So when we get in a large bath of hot water, it opens up our pores and lots of times we sweat. So that's just an easy way, even if you didn't add anything to your bath water, that will help you to detoxify. Anytime we sweat, that helps. But this not only really um, improves our, I mean, like I, it just relaxes me to get in the bath. So it only, you know, improves, I guess, my emotional state. I just feel so refreshed and relaxed when I get out. But it also strengthens our immune system and prevents disease because, again, it helps to get those um, uh, toxins out, especially with the um, hot water. But when I, I talk about what I add to it, that just kind of intensifies that. So when, just like Julie said, any of these things are going to be, you know, she mentioned if you have toxic buildup and you're just feeling sluggish and you're feeling kind of blah, it's, you know, one, doing some of these things will definitely help that. You might think, well, brushing your skin, that's kind of, I mean, is that really going to help that much? Or taking a bath, is that really going to help? If all those things are kind of added together, it, it makes a huge difference. Not only do they make a big difference um, set apart, but definitely use as a lifestyle. They really do make a big, big difference. So what, how is a detox bath different than a regular bath? So, you know, maybe if you're just used to hopping in a tub full of uh, bath, you might, bath water, you may put some bubbles in it or you may even put some Epsom salt. But, you know, what else could you do to kind of intensify those detoxifying effects? So just a basic standard detox bath, I guess you could call it, would include three things, Epsom salt, baking soda, and essential oils. Now, I probably, you know, definitely if I'd gotten in the bath, prior to when I started with essential oils, I would kind of just leave that out. But honestly, that really does, again, intensify the effect. All of the three things that I mentioned putting in a detox bath will definitely increase the detoxifying effect. So Epsom salt is normally something we have around. These aren't really crazy ingredients that you're going to have to go out and buy. Baking soda, for sure. Um, we have that definitely, if not in the bathroom, in the kitchen. I have baking soda all over my house because I love to use it for so many things. But um, and essential oils uh, are definitely part of my lifestyle and, and many people, you know, have those around now. So adding those three, I usually do uh, equal parts of the Epsom salt and baking soda. So half a cup to half a cup or one cup to one cup and then about three to five drops of essential oil. Now, some uh, of the oils that I like to use are like lavender, serenity, deep blue, marjoram, ylang ylang. Those are all kind of calming oils. Um, deep blue definitely helps if you've had some like, you know, you overworked at the gym or you're just feeling kind of achy, that really helps with that. So kind of whatever mood you're in, I like to just pick based on that. Um, so that's really a standard detox bath. And like I said, I take one about once to twice a week. 
Now, if someone isn't feeling good, I wanted to mention two other things that I add that just kind of really bump that up a notch. I called it an up-level detox bath. So uh, in addition to those three uh, ingredients that I already mentioned, you can also add hydrogen peroxide and apple cider vinegar. So adding those two really helps to just increase that detoxifying effect. And so I usually like to add a fourth a cup of each of those ingredients to the other three that I mentioned. And I was just thinking when I was writing this out, we really need a blog post on this. <laughs> that would be a really great thing to uh, refer back to if you don't remember the measurements or different things like that. But honestly, I don't really measure much of anything. I just kind of put some stuff in the bath and <laughs> call it a day. But some people love to measure, and I'll definitely work on getting that on our website. But um, think about doing this for yourself, but also for your kids. I mean, my kids have been sick. If you um, follow me personally or even on our brand page, you probably have, you know, there's just sickness going around everywhere. But my daughter especially, we took three detox baths yesterday because they just make her feel better when she gets out. And I know it's helping her body to kind of recover and relax. So I love doing that. But make sure whenever you do take um, a bath of any sort, just to stay hydrated because it does kind of, um, you know, if you sweat any or if it just kind of drains you a little bit that way. So just make sure you're staying hydrated. So I hope you'll try this. Maybe, you know, if you don't take baths normally, get a great book, put on a mask, make it like me, you know, I, I make it my me time, right? I love to just get in there and just kind of drown out the world. I even put in some earbuds. My husband's called me. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm in here enjoying my bath time. So um, let us know. Put in the comments. If you're if you're on live, do you like to take baths? Do you already dry skin brush? If we haven't covered something that you have questions about, I know Morgan said you just answered our, uh, my question, which is awesome. But sometimes we don't think of everything. So please leave it in the comments and, and we'll hop back to those. So Julie's going to hop over to oil pulling now and tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, and just a, 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 one thing I wanted to mention about the detox baths, um, two oils that I've been using, and we actually use these at our make and take. We made a detox bath blend uh, this past weekend. Um, two oils that are extremely detoxifying, not necessarily relaxing, although you could add some of the relaxing oils to this, are juniper berry and zendocrine, which is the detox blend. Um, and I, at first, when I decided to use these two together, I used them in a bath, you know, um, obviously before we did the make and take. And I was really uh, thinking, I, I'm not sure, because those aren't like super, um, appealing smells, quite honestly. But when I put them in the bath together, it actually smelled really good to me. And it smelled very um, fresh and cleansing, just just like you think of if I want to detox. Um, so I would encourage you if you're if you're looking for relaxation, you know, you might want to choose a certain set of oils. But if you're looking, you know, really for um, super detoxifying effect, then those would be two good oils to choose. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move on to oil pulling. This has kind of become a lot more popular. So I would think that that many of you, maybe most of you, who um, follow us, you know, know about oil pulling or have at least heard of it, whether you practice it or not. So oil pulling has actually been around for thousands of years. This is really nothing new. This is actually something that they used to do um, years and years ago to help clean and detoxify their mouths so that they didn't have, um, you know, dental decay and bad breath because, you know, used to, they didn't have toothbrushes. So this is one of the things that back in the day that people um, used to do, which I thought was really interesting because a lot of the things, if you guys notice, a lot of the things that we do now, we're really just getting back to what has always worked, you know, kind of back to our roots, to, um, things that are more natural that work with our body, which I love, which is just awesome to me. So oil pulling, the benefits of this are it helps to remove bacteria in your mouth. It helps to promote healthy gums, mm -hmm. makes your teeth whiter. So this is like a natural tooth whitening um, um, ritual, I guess you could say. Uh, so really beneficial to gum health for plaque and bacteria. Those are kind of the, the biggest benefits and removing, you know, removing the toxins. I don't know if you guys know this, but actually you get a lot of um, toxins deposited in your mouth on your tongue as you sleep. And we're going to talk about another um, ritual kind of that we incorporate that's good for that as well. But so your mouth, a lot of bacteria and toxins can live in your mouth is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. 
So what is oil pulling? So this is just just like it says, it's the act of just putting oil in your mouth and swishing it around for a certain period of time daily if you can. But again, incorporating some of these things, you know, um, once a week is better than not at all. And developing that routine of what works for you um, over time, you know, will lead to really big results. OK, so I was reading online some testimonials from people who had experienced really great benefits from oil pulling, not only what I mentioned previously, but things like improvement in skin conditions. Um, and this would really make sense if you're removing more toxins from the body. Uh, so better skin, uh, decrease in pain from arthritis, so decrease in inflammation. So I thought that was um, that was very interesting. Uh, decreased headaches and better hormone balance. So, I mean, those are really great benefits. Now, most people will experience that do this will experience um, a cleaner mouth and a change in their breath. Um, actually, if you, um, you know, if someone has chronic halitosis or bad breath within a week of just doing the oil pulling within a week, within a month, um, most people that, you know, have um, any kind of dental issues or unhealthy gums will see um, healthier gums and, um, you know, better dentition, basically. So how do you do this? Now, there are a couple of different options as far as the oil that you use. Back in the day, they actually used to use sesame oil, which to me sounds extremely disgusting. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I absolutely love toasted sesame oil in an Asian dish, but I cannot imagine swishing that in my mouth for 20 minutes. I just, I don't think I could do it. And there's a, there's not a lot as far as eating that I could not do, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I couldn't do that. So the oil, and, and you can also use olive oil or sunflower oil. Those are two options, but the really the best oil to use is coconut oil. And nowadays, most people use coconut oil for cooking or, um, you know, putting it on their skin, to get you know, softer, smoother skin. So most people will have this. Um, you, you want to get the coconut oil that you would eat, not the fractionated coconut oil that comes in liquid form. You want to get you know, the coconut oil that solidifies at room temperature that you would cook with or eat. Now, the reason that coconut oil is so beneficial is because it has something in it called lauric acid. And basically, all you need to know about that is it has scientific evidence that shows that it's anti-inflammatory and it's antimicrobial. So again, decreasing inflammation, getting rid of bacteria. So the way that you do this is you start with one teaspoon. You start with one teaspoon of oil and you work your way up to one tablespoon is ideal. Now, I still probably don't use a full tablespoon, even though I've been doing this for several years. Um, I find that um, it, I get too much in my mouth. It just gets too full if I use a full tablespoon. So, maybe I'm not quite there yet. So, you start with a teaspoon of oil. So, what I'll do is just to explain this to you in case you have no clue. I think we should watch you oil pull for 20 minutes. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. That would be like, you know, I'd be like this. <laughs> it's just like, and then we're going to watch me tongue scrape, right? <laughs> I do not want to see that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just get a teaspoon, I mean, again, like Carrie said, we don't measure. Just get eyeball, just a little small amount of oil. And I like to just to kind of um, not only add some other benefits, but to make it taste good. I mean, you know, I don't want to just swish coconut oil in my mouth. I want to add something to it personally. So my favorite combination of essential oils to add to that is uh, spearmint and uh cinnamon. That tastes like so good together. Um, and it's just really fresh and I don't mind doing the oil pulling when it tastes good. Now, two other ones that are also good and people, um, I find people really like to use are On Guard, which is the protective blend. So that would be another great one. And then peppermint. You could just totally just use peppermint. But those are, you, you know, you get added benefits from adding the essential oils and then it just makes your, um, it, it makes it really fresh. So you put, so what I do is I just take a spoon with my teaspoon of um, coconut oil. In fact, to make it easy and simple for myself, I keep a little jar, um, extra jar, um, that I just scoop some coconut oil out um, 
of my big container in my bathroom on my bathroom counter with a spoon in it at all times. So it makes it super easy. Mm -hmm. I just scoop a teaspoon out. I put a, one drop each of the spearmint and the cinnamon. You put it right into your mouth and then you're just basically like swishing, just like you would any kind of liquid, which if you've not done this, I'm sure this sounds really strange. Mm -hmm. um, idea is to swish that constantly in your mouth for up to 20 minutes. Now, 20 minutes is the goal. And I'm sure you're thinking, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, you won't be able to make it 20 minutes the first time you do it. I guarantee you probably won't. Um, I think I made it 10 or a little more the first time I did it. But what will happen is you, your body, you're, as you're doing this, more saliva is kind of being added <laughs> into, you know, into your mouth. <laughs> And so your mouth gets really full. Um, what you don't want to do is you just want to make 100% sure you don't swallow any of what you've been swishing around because you are pulling out toxins and things that you don't want in your body, bacteria, toxins. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you spit that out. So if your mouth gets really full after five minutes and you're like, I'm like, this is about to spew out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I know this sounds like, like, but I'm just being real um, <laughs> because this happened to me before. But anyway, you are you getting a visual here? And, yeah, that's what I was talking So you go and you make sure that you spit this out in the trash can. Don't spit it down your drain because it could, you know, harden um, if it, you know, when it gets cold or whatever. And especially if you have a septic system, you don't want to be spitting that down your drain because you could have issues. So spit it out in um, in the trash can. Now, sometimes people, I've had people ask, why 20 minutes? And I thought that was interesting. So I started looking into this just to quickly tell you, um, there's actually um a doctor that wrote a book, it's called The Oil Pulling Theory, and his name is Bruce Fife. Um, and he said that 20 minutes is enough time to break through plaque. So this really helps with overall dentition. And honestly, I've noticed that since I've been doing this, when I go to the dentist, they really don't have to scrape as much plaque off my teeth. So I totally believe that this works. And people usually do, you know, have, or have commented on the fact that I have white teeth. You know, and I don't put anything else on them. I mean, I use our own bar toothpaste, of course, but I don't, put it, I don't do anything else other than that and um, and the oil pulling. But the 20 minutes is long enough to break through plaque and pull bacteria into the mouth, but not long enough for that bacteria and toxins to get reabsorbed into the skin and, you know, back into the body which I thought was really interesting. So you don't want to yeah. go over the 20 minutes. Um, so 20 minutes is really um, ideal. So best time to do this in the morning, right when you wake up, before you eat, before you even brush your teeth, before you do drink, certainly before you drink, because as I said, you get bacteria deposited kind of in, in toxins in your mouth as you sleep. Um, and so you want to do the oil pulling first. Now, um, I would encourage you, um, I don't always do this first thing in the morning, to be honest. Like if I'm, if I have where I can't and I'm having to talk to somebody in my family, I don't want to just stick oil in my mouth because then I'm just, you know, it's not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, um, I've recently started doing it when I read in the morning. Um, I always read first thing before anybody else gets up. I do my morning devotion and um, quite honestly, it helps me stay awake because I fall asleep easily when I, um, when I read. So you know, you could do it like that first thing in the morning. If you shower first thing when you get up, I find that's another great time to do it because most of the time people aren't interrupting you um, in the shower, you know, and if they do, you just, I just always go, point to my face, like, can't talk to you right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they leave you alone. So, you know, um, but I would um, definitely encourage you to try this. It'll probably be a little bit weird for you at first, but um, your mouth will feel very clean and fresh afterwards. Uh, and Carrie is going to next talk about something that uh, another ritual that's super important to do after you oil pull. So mm -hmm. I'll let Carrie go into to that. Now, Morgan asked, how long did it take you to work up the 20 minutes? Oh, um, good question. I would say, and I don't do, you can do this every day. Um, I don't do it every day, to be honest. I do it um, a few times a week. And it's just because, you know, I may not, just not be able to incorporate it that morning. Let's just say that, <laughs> you know, for various reasons. Um, I would say probably after doing it um, 
you know, for a couple of weeks, I slowly worked up. So within a month, I would say you would be able to work up to a tablespoon or she asked for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. Same thing. Um, I still don't put the full tablespoon. I probably could, but I still don't probably use a full tablespoon. But up to 20 minutes, definitely. The length of time was easier for me to work up to than the amount of oil, I would say. Mm -hmm. And it, and it really does help if you're doing something else, like not just like sitting in the clock looking at it thinking, oh my God, it's only been like two minutes. How am I going to make it 20 minutes? So that really does help to stay distracted however you can. So um, that was so informative. And I don't like, this is another one that I haven't done on a consistent basis, but I think I'm going to start doing it in the morning because obviously that's the best time as, as Julie taught us. But um, it's like, I do have a problem staying awake when I do my quiet time. So I'm going to start doing that in the morning. So great, great um, tips. I learned, I always learn something from you because you just, you're so proficient on everything. So thank you. All right. And, and hang with us because we have two more we're going to discuss and we're going to go a little bit over what we normally do, but tone scraping is what I'm going to speak on next. And um, if you've ever seen one of these, that's what the tongue scraper, um, that looks like when well, I'm going the wrong way, looks like that I use and that's probably the most efficient. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about why it's so important and why I'm, I'm sort of obsessed with it because now I can't, I can't go without scraping my tongue. It's crazy. So as with a lot of these things that we've talked about, th these were incorporated into a detox that we did probably a couple of years ago. And tone scraping was one of the things that I connected with immediately. And I knew, Whenever I saw what came off the end of this thing, I was never going to not do it because my mouth just felt so clean. It just, I could taste foods better, all of those things. It's crazy to think that just by scraping your tongue, getting the bacteria off, that you'll be able, um, you know, to have all those great benefits. So really quickly, it's very simple to do as well. It only takes a few seconds. And like Julie said, it's best to do, obviously, in the morning um, after you oil pull. So what I normally do is... Um, run it it's very easy to use and i would hate to have to show you that it's <laughs> actually doing it but you just you know you, you put put your tongue out flat and just kind of go back as far as you can and rake it to the front and you'll start to see that on the end of this um there'll be like a white matter and it's not anything really appealing about it but you'll just think that was on my tongue and now it's not and i love tongue scraping <laughs> so i love to do it um you know right when i wake up i'll do that and then i'll brush my teeth and like, but now I'm going to start oil pulling and then doing that. But either way, you would do it before you brushed your teeth. And this way, you know, when you sleep, uh, there's lots of dead cells that get get um, it collected on your tongue. And there are bacteria and all those things as we sleep. You know, our bodies are generating as we sleep. So there's going to be, uh, you know, things that our body kind of puts off from that. And this is one of them. Sometimes you'll notice you have more congestion in the morning. That's kind of, um, you know, kind of our body's way, like I said, of, of detoxing overnight. And those are almost like, I don't know what, what word I'm looking for. Um, like, you know, when you cook a soup and there's a foam that comes on the top, something like that. You know, if you were to think about that, that's what happens at night. So it's really important that we kind of rid our body of that, because if not, it's just getting recycled. We're just going to continually have that in our mouth and it's going to get redeposited in our body. So it's really important. And, and it, as of all of these, to me, this is the easiest one to do. It's so easy. This thing costs about $6. You can get off Amazon. Um, and it's just so easy to incorporate in, into your daily routine. So um, what are some of the benefits of doing this? The, the Probably the thing that I noticed the most was I could taste food better. Once, I, once you get off those dead cells on your tongue, you can taste food. It's crazy. You know, you won't need as much salt. Sweet things will taste even sweeter, so you'll need to use maybe just eat less of it or use less sugar in whatever you eat or drink. What a great byproduct of simply scraping off your tongue every morning. So I, I just, it, it was really funny. I, I was actually somewhere last week and I tasted a dessert and I was like, man, this is sweet. Like I can just taste sugar and salt a lot more. And so and nobody else commented that, but it was just interesting to me. I feel like I can taste the different flavors a lot more because I do this. And not only, um, you know, are we going to get a uh, better taste of our food, we're going to get more satisfied when we eat food because we can taste it better. It's also going to improve our um, digestion and, and a lot of our different body systems, our immunity, because we're getting those toxins off. So pretty easy thing to incorporate. Um, don't want to spend too much time on it. It's pretty straightforward. This is, um, did want to mention that this um, tongue scraper is from Dr. Tongue. That's the brand. You can find it on Amazon. It's about six or so dollars. 
Um, and it's just a great thing to do. It also helps with bad breath too. So um, I secretly bought my husband one for Christmas, <laughs> just trying to encourage him to use it. Um, but definitely uh, try this one out because I feel like this is going to be one of the easiest ones you can probably incorporate. Yeah, and I, I'm going to, I, first, before I end with our last um, sort of ritual that you could incorporate to help detoxify, um, about the tongue scraping, I was not, to be honest, sold on this. Like when um, I, we first learned about it, I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. You can't, and you might be the same way. You might be like, I am not going to buy this tongue scraper because, you know, I mean, what if it doesn't work? I don't even want to be out $6. Well, get a spoon. This is what I did to begin with. Get a spoon and you can actually use the spoon to scrape your tongue. Like you just hold over the sink basically. And you just take like the side of the spoon um, and then just scrape down. And seriously, um, I mean, now the tongue scraper works better than the spoon. But if you wanted to just try that first, um, that's what I did. And um, it is um, like honestly really disgusting what comes I mean like you're like ooh, I'm so glad that I did this and I'm like Carrie and most people that do this um will not stop it like they don't stop doing it they you know once you start doing it you can't not do it because <laughs> your mouth feels so much cleaner and so much better like right when I wake up I have water on my um, bedside table I used to always just like you know drink water because I was thirsty when I wake up I will not drink any water because all I can think about when I first wake up is everything that's probably on yeah. my table I need to tongue scrape immediately. That's what I do right when I get out of the bed. Um, you know, so, um, or oil pull first and then tongue scrape if it's mm -hmm. a day that I'm doing that, you know, so go ahead and, um, and try this. I think you'll, you'll really see some big benefits from this one. And like Harry said, it's a really easy one to do. Um, okay. So last but not least, this happens to be one that I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with and hopefully you treat yourself every now and then. And that is massage. Uh, massage can actually be extremely detoxifying. In fact, when we do our uh, seven day shift detox that we actually just finished, um, we run that twice a year in a guided private group. And we always encourage a massage during that week of cleansing because actually when, when you get a massage and the, the sort of strokes, um, you know, that the therapist uses and the pressure that's applied to the muscles and the tissues, it actually helps to stimulate the circulatory system and that lymphatic system again. So again, helping to remove toxins and chemical buildup uh, in your body. Uh, mas massage has actually been shown to improve energy, to give you a stronger immune system, to improve your overall skin appearance from detoxifying, and actually to help you have clearer thinking and less brain fog. I mean, who doesn't want all those benefits? Not to mention, it feels amazing. Like, you know, who doesn't want that? I mean, like, Oh my goodness, if I could get a massage every single week, I would so be there, you know. Um, so I would just encourage you, um, you know, you're you're worth it. You need to take care of yourself. You know, incorporate this and what maybe once a month. Maybe you think I can't even do that. Maybe it's every other month, but at least you know, try to get a massage to get these added benefits. And if you'll ever notice. Usually after a massage, your massage therapist will give you a bottle of water and say, drink lots of water. And that's because they know that they've released these toxins in your body and that you've got to eliminate them through the urine. So, you know, super, super important. Um, anything lastly that you want to add before we close, Carrie? I think, um, I think, you know, some of these were baths and massages people could probably relate to, maybe not some of the other ones. Um, <laughs> to you, but I really just hope that you guys will try one of them. Just pick one. Um, try one that kind of resonated with you maybe. And um, yeah, just have an open mind is what I would say. Even if it sounds weird, just try it. You never know. I, I mean, when I first heard about tongue scraping, I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> but now it's one of the things that I won't, won't go without. So just that's the thing with health and with trying new things and just kind of being on that, you know, doing that shift that you want to do, get where you want to go. Just have an open mind. Because if you don't, you know, if you if you say you're not going to like to, you know, if you have that thought that, oh, I'm not going to like this and this is what is this even doing? Most of the time you won't do it because you've already set that intention in your mind. So, um, you know, just maybe if you need to go back and rewatch this and, and really soak up the information. I think a lot of these will be good to do um, post on our website. So we might try to work on that 
so that you guys can go back and, and kind of learn more about them in smaller chunks, maybe, and just kind of refer, refer back to them as needed. But um, I think I, I love this topic. I love self-care topic because it just gets brushed under the rug so often. And as a mom, I desperately need to take care of myself. Um, and, and we all do, not just myself. We all need to take that extra time. So um, report back. Let us know, you know, oh, my God, I tried tongue scraping. It was awesome or it was crazy and I didn't like it or, you know, whatever. We, we'd love to hear from you because, um, you know, maybe we could do more on one subject. If you guys are really into it, we'll definitely expound and just kind of talk about different things. Whatever, um, whatever you're feeling, whatever information you need, let us know because we'd love to hear from you always. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, next week, we'll be back same time, uh, 1230 on Wednesday, and we will be covering detoxifying your beauty regimen. So tune in for that. And beauty regimen really, you know, it's going to be a lot about um, facial care. We'll probably incorporate um, some overall body care and maybe some hair care. Uh, so tune in for that. And we always love being with you guys at this time. So let us know if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and we'll be happy to answer them. Hope you guys have a great rest of the week.